Hello, 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 and welcome to Question of the Day. I am excited to roll this out for you guys. I get so many questions all the time on email, on messaging, on WhatsApp, on all the social platforms that I thought, well, why not scale the answers to these questions and help you guys out with what is probably in your mind as well in some capacity. So we've chosen questions that uh, can be kind of universally applicable to many different industries, many different professions. And we're gonna try to do gonna try to do this at least once a week, maybe more, but for now, uh, at least once a week. So I wanna just jump into some questions that I got this week. And I think that, uh, hopefully that helps you. Got a question in last night from Alex. Alex says, what's the best way to stop procrastinating on a goal that you've had for over 10 years? Alex, the answer to that question is, Ask yourself why you're procrastinating on that goal. My guess, most people procrastinate on a goal for one of two reasons. Number one, they don't actually want to do it. And number two, they are afraid of failing. The question then becomes, who are you afraid of failing in front of? Is it your mom? Is it your dad? Is it your brother? Is it your girlfriend or your wife? And then my advice would be to tell them that you want to do something really great and you're afraid of failing in front of them. And that sounds a little bit strange, but most all fear comes from the fact that we are afraid of failing in front of someone. There's actually very little f fear of failing in front of ourselves because really at the end of the day, uh, if you fail and only you know about it, it's not that big of a deal. So the question then becomes, number one, is this something that you really wanna do? And if the answer to that question is yes, then ask yourself, who are you afraid of failing in front of? Have a conversation with them. Tell them that you need their support, you need their love, you don't wanna fail in front of them. And uh, I think you'd be surprised at the answer that you get from that person and the support that might overflow and the extra push that that might give you. Um, procrastination is something that we all deal with, but really it comes down to one or two things. Number one, you're just not taking action because you don't actually want it to happen. Or number two, you're not taking action because you don't want to fail in front of someone. But it actually always is, the, the third part I guess I'd throw in is, you're not taking action. So why not? That's the real question. Uh, figure out the answer to that, have that conversation, and then jam on that thing, especially if you want to do it for 10 years. Thanks for the question, Alex. Next question from Sabrina. Sabrina, I'm a freelance photographer and videographer. What's the best platform to show off my work, also building new connections and reaching out to people that I've never met before? Sabrina, and anyone that's in a visual world, there are a few things that I think you absolutely have to be on right now. The first is Instagram, second is Pinterest, and the third is Facebook. Um, anyone that's doing any sort of creative visual work right now, I think it's important that, number one, you use, there's, there's so many ways to build an organic uh, following, and, and the first thing is, let's focus on Instagram. Instagram, you can literally, if I was a freelance photographer, a freelance videographer, I would do a couple of different things. The first is, I'd start getting really good at using at least 15 to 20 hashtags every single time I put up a picture. There's an incredible reach that you can do organically about figuring out uh, about if you use hashtags correctly to be discovered, um, if you don't have any money. If you have money, uh, well, the second thing is ins influencers. Instagram influencers is a huge thing right now. And what does that mean for anybody that wants to get in front of a new audience? Um, and maybe you don't have an audience yet, so it doesn't make sense to do like a trade, like I'll showcase your work on my Instagram page, you showcase my work on yours. What you need to do is you need to think about who are the people that have big reaches, and you can do one of two things. If you have money, you literally just have them give you a shout out for a, a, a certain amount of money. It's just paid advertising to get in front of their audience. If you don't have money, and especially for someone like Sabrina, who is a uh, who has equipment and has time and has an ability and a skill set, then you offer that person a free photo shoot. You say, hey, I noticed that you're really growing. Let's say it's a musician, for example. Um, I'd love to come and do a free two hour photo shoot for you. The only thing that I would ask is that you uh, put some of the photos up on your Instagram and tag me. It's a great way to get immediate exposure to a big audience and all you've really done is given two hours of your time. Of course, your photos have to be good, but let's assume that they are. Same thing can be true if you're doing videos. Find, there's, you know how many people want videos right now? Find new businesses, find uh, personalities, find YouTubers, and say to them like, hey, let me come in, let me collaborate with you, let me shoot behind the scenes for you at your next event, or this and that, 
and in exchange, you put up that clip and you tag me and you say, hey, it's great working with Sabrina or whatever your name is. Um, and that is a really fast, great way for your stuff to grow. Uh, Pinterest is straight, great visual effect. Uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for you to do cool things on there. And then Facebook, if you have the budget, uh, open up your own professional page. Every single person needs a professional page. Like, you can't advertise on a personal page, and the person, the algorithms of Facebook only allow you to reach a very, very, very small one, two, three percent of your friends, and they do that because they don't want everyone to be getting all the information. The Facebook algorithm is very sophisticated, so the people know, uh, Facebook knows the kinds of stuff you want into your feed. So Facebook is just smart. And the second thing they want you to do is they want you to open a professional page so you can do uh, you can do that thing where you advertise and you can segment and you can say, depending on what you do, Sabrina, if you do events, then you can segment your Facebook advertising. You can make a really cool video about yourself or about a recent event that you did. You can segment you know, 30 to 40 year olds who have this title or who are working at this company who have this event coming up. You can, in, in the interest tab of the Facebook advertising, you can put down your competition's name. You can run ads against different events that are coming up. There's just a million things that you can do, but I would start there. I think for someone in the freelance world, Instagram right now is a gold mine. So I hope that helps. Um, question number three from Emma. Brian, what is a routine, a routine that you have to start and finish your day? Emma, the truth is I don't really have any routines because I every day is so different. I probably could afford to have a bit more of a routine, um, but every day is so different. Here's what I think is important. The only steady constants in my day are a couple of things. Number one, eternal gratitude. I wake up and go to sleep in a state of gratitude and that makes a huge difference for my day because if I'm starting my day in a grateful place and ending my day in a grateful place, it's just amazing what happens for your psyche and your outlook on the day for whatever challenges come throughout the day. Um, the other constant I would say is I'm always asking myself, I'm, I'm constantly auditing my time. So I don't have a daily routine that I start and, and finish the day with but, and I think that for a lot of people that works well to have that, you know, start with a 6 a.m. workout or a 7 a.m. shake or whatever, uh, and then, you know, 15 minutes of meditation before bed, um, that's fine, like do your thing. But for me, what's more, more important to me than like starting and ending every single day the same way is being grateful, number one. But number two, taking a really hard look at every minute of my day. So I am very obsessed with making sure that I'm maximizing the most out of the day. You know, a lot of people say, I'll have a morning and evening routine, but then throughout the day, they do that routine, but then throughout the day, they're wasting immense, and I mean immense amounts of time. And so, uh, just auditing yourself as to how you're actually using every minute of your day is so, so important. I think you'll see a huge uh, shift when you say, uh, I'm using my minutes or my hours in a certain way that makes sense or doesn't. Uh, that's it. Hope that makes sense. Those are the three questions. I'm going to try to start with three questions and, and make it uh, pretty concise. If you have a question, message me on YouTube. Message me on my social stuff. We'll put that up. Put up. Uh, you know, you can message me on my Latingo Living uh, page on YouTube. My Latingo Brian Rashid on Facebook and Instagram, or my Brian Rashid account. So. Uh, any questions you have, I'd love to answer. I'd love to help you. Any questions, business, networking, uh, venture capital, starting a firm, uh, entrepreneurship, relationship, whatever you want, I'm here for you. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day. Live in gratitude. Check out how you're using your time every day. Get on those social platforms. Thanks, guys.